Welcome, Earth enthusiasts, to a deep dive into some of the planet's most colossal and misunderstood geological phenomena, supervolcanoes. If you've ever heard whispers of Yellowstone threatening to wipe out civilization or wondered what truly makes a volcano super, you've come to the right place. We're going to unravel the science behind these geological titans, from how they form to what they mean for our future, all while busting some myths along the way. So what exactly is a supervolcano? It's not just a fancy name, it's a classification based on the sheer scale of an eruption. Most geologists, especially in the US, agree that a super eruption must rank an 8 on the volcanic explosivity index. This means it ejects a minimum of 1,000 cubic kilometers of material. That's a lot of ash, pumice and lava. To put that into perspective, the famous 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens, which turned day into night in some places and blanketed 11 US states with ash, was a VEI-5, ejecting about 0.67 cubic kilometers of material. Imagine that, but 500 times stronger at a minimum. These immense eruptions often lead to the formation of a caldera, a massive basin-shaped depression formed when the ground collapses after an enormous volume of magma is explosively withdrawn from beneath the Earth's surface. Unlike cone-shaped volcanoes we often picture, calderas can be so vast that you might be vacationing inside one and not even realize it. Yellowstone National Park is a prime example of this, encompassing one of Earth's largest active caldera systems. The formation of a supervolcano requires very specific geological conditions. Their existence can broadly be broken down into two main categories, those created by tectonic events like subduction or rifting, and those related to mantle hotspots beneath the Earth's crust. In subduction zones, where one tectonic plate dives beneath another, or during continental rifting events, where the land tears itself apart, large magma chambers can develop. Hot magma from the Earth's mantle rises into these weak spots, readily melting the surrounding continental rocks. This melting process changes the magma's chemistry, making it richer in silica and thus more viscous, or as we like to say, sticky rock. Then there are hot spots, like the one beneath Yellowstone. A hot spot is essentially a stationary area deep within the Earth where an abnormal amount of hot magma is upwelling in a plume-like shape from the mantle. The key here is that the hotspot itself doesn't move, but the tectonic plates above it do. This means that over millions of years, as a continental plate slowly glides over a hotspot, a chain of volcanic activity can form. The big difference between an oceanic hotspot like Hawaii, which produces runny basaltic lava flows, and a continental one like Yellowstone, is what happens when that basaltic magma hits the continental crust. Crucially, Recent research suggests that magma chambers beneath supervolcanoes aren't vast pools of molten rock. They are more like soggy, crystal-rich sponges. This crystal mush can persist for hundreds of thousands of years. Yellowstone National Park is a jewel of American wilderness, famous for its geysers, hot springs and bubbling mud pots. But beneath this stunning landscape lies one of Earth's most active and studied volcanic systems. The Yellowstone Caldera, which measures approximately 70 by 45 kilometers or 43 by 28 miles. For a long time, Yellowstone was thought to be extinct, until geological mapping in the 1960s revealed it had experienced three enormous explosive eruptions over the past 2.1 million years. Today, the Yellowstone magma system consists of two main reservoirs, a shallower one containing viscous rhyolite magma mostly solid but with 5 to 15 percent molten material and a deeper one with more fluid basaltic magma. Recent studies, including a groundbreaking 2024 discovery by Rice University scientists, identified a magmatic cap located 3.8 kilometers beneath the park. This cap is a mixture of molten silicate and water bubbles within porous rock, acting like a natural pressure regulating mechanism. It efficiently vents gas through fissures and channels which explains the park's abundant geysers, hot springs and fumaroles. Essentially, these act as pressure relief valves for the system. The discovery of this natural safeguard offers reassurance that a catastrophic eruption isn't imminent. In fact, the caldera has been subsiding by 2 to 3 centimeters, about 1 inch per year since 2010. This movement, though often sensationalized in headlines like magma on the move, 
is on a geological time scale more akin to a banana per decade. While the idea of a super eruption captures our imaginations and makes for great disaster movies, it's important to understand the actual geological risks. A full-scale super eruption would be catastrophic, injecting a massive ash plume and sulfur gases high into the atmosphere. Pyroclastic flows would destroy everything within a 100 kilometer radius and ashfall would disrupt agriculture, livestock and air travel across continents. However, the most likely events at Yellowstone are far less dramatic. The park's active hydrothermal system frequently experiences hydrothermal explosions, shallow rooted blasts of steam, water and rock, often without any associated volcanism. You might remember the recent unrest at Geyser Hill in 2023 where new features erupted and temporarily closed boardwalks due to hot water and debris. Yellowstone also emits toxic gases like carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. While generally dispersed by winds, CO2 being heavier than air, can accumulate in low-lying confined areas and become lethal at high concentrations. The USGS assesses the annual probability of a super eruption from Yellowstone at 0.14%. In simpler terms, the chances are incredibly low. One of the most persistent myths surrounding Yellowstone is that it's overdue for an eruption. This idea often stems from a miscalculation. The three major caldera forming eruptions occurred roughly 2.05 million, 1.28 million and 0.63 million years ago. Taking a simple average of the intervals yields about 710,000 years, not 600,000 and extrapolating from just two past intervals is statistically indefensible. Scientists have repeatedly refuted these claims, emphasizing that volcanic activity does not follow predictable schedules like a train timetable. So how do scientists keep an eye on this overhyped but still fascinating geological marvel? The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, a consortium of federal and state agencies and universities continuously monitors the region. Seismic monitoring Yellowstone is one of the Earth's most seismically active networks. Thousands of small earthquakes occur each year, mostly below magnitude 3. Recent advancements using machine learning have allowed researchers to detect 10 times more earthquakes than previously recorded, providing unprecedented detail into subsurface magma dynamics. Ground deformation Sensitive instruments like GPS receivers, strain meters, and tilt meters track minute changes in the ground shape. These subtle changes can reveal whether magma, gas, or fluids are accumulating beneath the surface. Geochemical monitoring. Scientists regularly sample hot spring waters and measure gas emissions from fumaroles to understand the chemical makeup of the fluids rising from deep within the volcano. They look for changes in gases like CO2, H2S, and especially the very rare sulfur dioxide, which is typically scrubbed by Yellowstone's hydrothermal system. New techniques. Researchers are employing cutting-edge methods like magnetotellurics, which use Earth's natural electromagnetic fields to create precise maps of the magma chambers, as molten rock is an excellent electrical conductor. This comprehensive monitoring allows Wevio to track the volcano's unrest, which includes large earthquakes, intense earthquake swarms, rapid ground displacement, and significant hydrothermal explosions. If monitoring parameters were to exceed known thresholds, YVO would issue an alert, but again, nothing of that magnitude is currently happening at Yellowstone. The public perception of Yellowstone as dangerous and on the verge of eruption is simply not backed by science. While the idea of a supervolcano captures the imagination, the reality of Yellowstone is far less sensational than often portrayed in media. It's a testament to the incredible power of our planet, but it's being watched closely. So, you can relax. Keep enjoying the geological wonders and maybe even relabel your magnets just in case the Earth's magnetic poles decide to reverse in a thousand years or so. Thank you for joining us on this geological journey. Stay curious, stay informed, and remember, civilization exists by geological consent, subject to change without notice, but ideally with plenty of warning. Welcome to my channel, where you'll find over 2,000 videos on geology, geochemistry, AI, and many other subjects. If you like what you see, help us grow by subscribing, liking, and sharing this channel. I think these videos are brilliant, and I'm sure you will like them too. Please like, comment, and 
subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell.